Chapter 8 The Last Quest Once again, I was staring at the bulletin board, trying to find something, anything. I could tell it was nearing the end of fall because the herb gathering postings were gone, along with the farm help. <sighs> it would be a night before the postings so are all requests for shoveling snow. Come on, come on, something, anything. Another ball tournament? No, by giving to that curious. It once when I noticed a posting that required both knights and knights in training. I hastily snatched it up, almost knocking down other postings in my rush. Mm, another escort mission. Haven't done that since we left Berry. Merchant Ventures? Name sounds familiar. It's at the Rivoli to Nor Valley. It's pretty far. Swaying back and forth, I tried to weigh my options. On one hand, it was a good opportunity to mingle with real knights. On the other, it meant leaving Oliver. I wonder whether the boys will be up for another long journey. I reread the posting multiple times before zeroing on the dead. <sighs> Pretty soon. I don't like making snap decisions with Akira and Ilmer's input first. I mean, if I hurry, I could. The receptionist was leaning over with one elbow pop up on the table. Raise an eyebrow, amused by my indecisiveness. I showed the posting to her. Hoping for a second option. What do you think of this? Oh, this one. It'll definitely lead you some points toward your graduation tonight, says. You're pretty close too, and this is a high ranking quest. Actually, you know, if you accept that posting, you most likely be knighted. I slapped the posting down the counter. Right! Done! She accepted the paper and gave me a smaller note with directions. Uh meeting time and names. Oh, looks like quite a few people accepted this one. Sounds important. Apparently, the contents are very valuable. Hands of all bodyguards. Mm. There was something nagging at me, but the excitement of accepting such a critical task made me giddy. I practically sprinted out of the guild in the direction of the gardens, hoping to find Kira and Elmari there. To Nor Bali, huh? I don't know, Harley. Yeah. Jess, it's a little out of the way, but it'll be a good experience and we'll see a new town. I think they specialize in mining and all that. I'm sure the dragon altar there will be impressive. Not that you need to see them anymore, Kier. I don't care. I don't care either way, Ilmari. Mm, what was the merchant company again? Oh, Merchant Venturas. A dark expression flickered across Ilmari's face. Is that the same group we scored when we left Barry? I rubbed my head as I reflected back. Oh, you're right! We did help them over four. Are you concerned it'll be dangerous again? Don't worry, there'll be even more bodyguards this time around. However, Ilmari was frankly shaking his head as I explained. It's not that. When we scored that carriage, and when that box fell, I saw its contents. I'm pretty sure it was dragon remains. Oh, oh. seriously? A tense atmosphere engulfed us, and it took me a moment to register. It. What? No. What? No. That can't be. Are you absolutely positive? I mean, you didn't tell us or our masters. Keeping something like this secret is. Hear me out. I know I shouldn't have remained quiet about it. At first I thought I was wrong, I never stumbled upon a dragon remains myself, and I'm not that familiar with Zerofest, but the feathers, the bones... I knew if I reported this to Master Kaya, we would both immediately be ordered back, even if I was just guessing. No exceptions. I was selfish. I didn't want the journey to have so abruptly. I'm sorry. My master was right. I wasn't ready to be a representative for a dragon kind. If I hope to build a better relationship between our races, I shouldn't disregard art like this. He appeared at me, obviously. You had no idea something like this was going on. I fervently shook my head. What? No. No! I wasn't aware of this all. This... Uh, I paused realizing I was training on a delicate territory. Uh... All the implications aside, is there something wrong about possessing the dragon remains? Kira and Ilmari stares at me as I've uttered a blamasphy in the church. 
and immediately glanced down in the chart room. No one should be possessing dragon remains. Um, what he means no. is um, when dragon time dies, their body eventually returns to Ishtera. Earth dragon became the mountains. The areas became the rivers and lakes, which is why we prefer to die in peace, where no one can find the remains. It's sacrilegious to stop them, and any dragon kind that accidentally discovers them will immediately avoid the rest of the place. I hardly doubt that heaven kind got a hold of those remains with a dragon kind's blessing. No, a dragon kind can't return to Hysteria if the remains have disturbed. So those people acquired the remains through forty means. Maybe it was an accident? You didn't say even Dragonkind can stumble upon them. Maybe the merchants had no idea those belong to Dragonkind. Claire glad at me a cousin uh, Are you defending what? them? No. What? No, I mean... I suck and rub my forehead. I'm just... I'm trying to make sense of this. I don't think my people would do something that really disrespectful. At least I'd like to believe that. We don't have much to go on. Now I see why Elmaris was so hesitant bringing the box contents up there earlier. Too many questions, not enough answers. Everything regarding this was unsettling and ominous. I glanced out of my note, then saw the place in time to meet the carriage. I'll be leaving soon. Oh. You're still accepting the quest? Arali, I don't want you getting involved with merchant ventures. Please reconsider. Here place it a hand on Elmaris' shoulder. Let her do what she wants. I didn't say a word. I'm going to see if I can check the contents. Since Ilmari isn't 100% sure that he even saw Dragon Remains, right? He nodded meekly. I want to think I didn't. Then let's stop speculating and get some clear answers. I'll go. But what if the cargo isn't the same? The carriage is recurring quite a few nights and senior night in training, so the contents should be important. Possibly they're the same. What would heaven kind? What would heaven kind want with dragon remains anyway? Wait here. If you accompany me, it'll definitely attract attention. I'll be back shortly. Maybe that's why the merchant who hired us in Barry was so nervous. He was being guarded by dragon kind. Mario appeared distracted by the idea of me going, while Kier simply nodded to encourage me. Don't take long. Let's do this. Right, leave it to me. I broke off from the group and quickly left the location indicated on the note. It said to me just outside the city, but one of the fills. I soon spotted a two horse carriage with the merchant venture sign it. Why did I just say? Mm, there were only a few people outside the carriage chatting, so I knew I had arrived earlier. Discreetly, I approached the other side of the vehicle and peered through the window. Sure enough, there was a long ornate box, similar to the one that we had escorted to Oliver. My fingers grazed the handle of the carriage door. I gave it a thank gentle tuck, but it refused to budge. <sighs> oh, fully already. As I pondered on whether to find an alternative, someone roughly grabbed my shoulder. I whipped around, my hand rising on my heel impulsively. An older man with short peepered hair and a sword and his hip glower at me. What are you doing here? Uh, um, uh, I pulled out my crumpled note. I'm a knight in training who joined this assignment. After examining me and glancing back at my badge, she nodded curtly. Then you shouldn't properly add like one. Looking suspicious would get you instantly dismissed from the test. What? Sorry about that. Yeah, I was just curious. I'm sorry, being night and training and all. Then take your position. We'll be believing on our client's orders. We dispersed. As I glanced back at the city walls, finding the urge to return to my friends, if I left now, I will be removed from the fishing anyway, and I still hadn't seen what the cargo held. I would have to carry out my duty. At least until I had another opportunity to check the box. Sorry, Carol Mari, this will take a little longer than I anticipated. As more knights, probably seven of them, and the merchant client whom I overheard called Dervishy, gather around the carriage, the coachman host himself onto the park. I knew we will be setting off in a few minutes. 
I hope Kira and Elmari don't think I'm deserting them. I anxiously look back, but as the horses start throwing, I force myself to follow the group. Uh, in a desperate attempt, I toss the note on the ground, even though I was pretty sure the chances of the boys finding it were slim. Not like I had any other method of communicating with them. I linger behind while my eyes dart from one night to the next. They were all in uniform. Their breastplates shone brilliantly and they, they each had a trusty weapon at their hip or strutted up their back. Usually I'd be elated just to be in their presence, but my mind was on other things. The city of Oliver vanished from sight as we entered the northern forest. Unlike the birch forest surrounding Barry, the trees were thicker and the terrain even more rocky, although still a far cry from Montaigne's. I did my best to remain reserved, but Lady Spire's name was brought up, and the knights asked me many questions about her and me. A few were interested in my sword skills, and she had personally trained me. <sighs> That's still really all they perceived when they see me. We did not make a first stop until mid-afternoon. As the knights ate, stuck, and went scouting, I appreciated the courage again. Although I did not have a chance to physically check the box, maybe there she would let something split about the guns. The carrier's door was open. There she sat inside comfortably, talking, the prom talking to the prominent knife with the peppered heart, who cautiously stood by the vehicle. The other terrible design flaw, one swift strike to the chest and the sternum was shut. Which is why, even if he, it's aesthetically pleasing, it's not idea and natural. Ugh, he's dropping it to help me neither. What are the chances I will catch important information anyway? Give it up, I sell it away from the couch. Oh, about the contents. Wait! Surprise and turn around, I'll slam my knee on the knee on the wheel. I said, Rob my leg. And stood up, then I peer around the vehicle and spot me. No more than 10 minutes related to theirs. Right, break time, whatever. I gave it an awkward salute and hobbled away, wearing myself and lost chance. That, that, that was dumb. I didn't even feel like passing on the message that I just wander off while I try to clear my toes. Yep's drop and how to work. I am the worst spy ever. The box was always under constant surveillance and I doubt directly asking with help. It's harder than it looks. I hear the bushes rustle. Ah! Before I could even touch my heel, I was only drawn back by a rough tackle. I crashed into one of the shrubs and gasped for air as I painfully sat up. Are the guys? Here. Here was kneeling before me. Wow, what was that? He broke a finger to his lips and I un instantly hushed up. I lowered my voice. What did you find me? Why did you have to push me? That hurt. <laughs> because you always let your sword did the thing. And it was easy to find you. I just had to know the main road to Norvale. I guess throw me the note. Don't need do anything. Uh. What note? Figures. <laughs> Where's Elmari? He's scouting and telling the carriage where they left to find you. Do you know if the box contains dragon remains? I'm just like my palms with the dirt and very big feet. <sighs> oh, I've been trying all day and still not. There needs to be some sort of distraction. I can't check when there's armed knights everywhere. Kier made a fist and rotated his wrist. Bring it. We can always plan an ambush. No, no violence. I don't think Omari would approve. Plus, we still need to confirm if the cargo is indeed dragon remains. If it's and if it is. He scoffed and dropped his chance with a thumb. We seize it. Even dragon remains contain some magic. They might fall into the wrong hands. Right. I read my badge boringly. Then uh, the mission would be considered a failure. However, this is more important right now. Are you sure? I muster a smile to reassure him. Yeah. A mirror setback. You can coin on me. Now we need to do some sort of destruction, without resorting to brute force. We exchanged in blank stares, and I realized that neither of us could prepare a proper plan. Uh. We would sight, at last. The Mario could probably come up with something. Leave it to me. 
Right, leave it to us. He... We... He'll devise a tactic. Users perk up ears. Perk up. And he angled his chin in the direction of the carriage. They're gathering everyone. You should head back. Thanks. Of course. Thanks for looking for me here. Surprisingly, he leaned in and gave me a friendly head back. Be careful. Right. I will. I stood up and brushed the dirt off my knees before assembling with the other knights. I felt bad this evening the knights, but it was the only way to know if the coffer held dragon remains. It was just been normal cargo. I slowly moved closer to the carriage and eventually let it pass as me as I pretended to be guard the rear. I would need to position myself after all. The air around me cooled, and I shivered as the temperature dropped rapidly. A mist emerged from the gun as soon as, as soon and shouldered us. Many of the knights paused, and the carriage slowed down. Fuck, at this time? But it was clear just as soon a knight was swiftly round on the side and vanished into the mist, causing the others to panic. Was, was that a ghost? Ooh, Swords were drawn, and the knights formed a tightly knight group to defend themselves. I took this opportunity to dash to the carriers and throw open the door. I heard another thud, followed by my scream. The dervishy was huddling to the seat and I burst in, took it onto his arm. It's not safe here, you need to get out of here now. Out of the corner of my eye, I spied the box on the floor. I janked on Deverson's arm again and he recruitingly got out. As soon as he was upside, I dived inside and shut the door. What? Sorry hey! About Sorry! I snatched up the bus and proceeded to exit to the other side, or tried to on to light really as the door was locked from the inside. This door's foiled again! Infuriated that my plans were being thwarted by wooden barriers, I pushed open the, open the other door, nearly smacking the client and the place as I slipped out. Sorry again! He said that I had the box in the place where they're not rich. Traitor! Thief! I duck and darted around the carriage, alarming the horses as I headed straight into the thickest part of the mist. I could hear the knights scrambling to find me as dervishes scream orders at them. They're pounding. I increased the distance between us. The mist started to clear as I reached a steep slope. I momentarily looked down and placed back as I heard more clamors. I jumped down. My body is slightly angled. I staggered awkwardly as I landed. Trying not to hit a tree or trip on a root. Did I get away? And the others? Remembering that I still had the box, I kneeled down in case it would be it. I opened it up and I kneeled sharply. Inside were beautiful long objects that resembled shale with an emerald sheen. They were exactly like ears' ears. Underneath were hard flame like stones with groups. Oh no. Scales? This is bad. And it was possible this wasn't just one time delivery. If the first carriage had also carried dragon remains, this could be a full fledged underground trading route. How long had this been going on? How did the knights not know? Wouldn't they check the contents? Unless. I shut the box, pushing it underneath a shrub for now before standing up. I would have to inform Kier and Nilma. Shoot. Before I could take another step, the urge shouldn't be rubbed. A large fissure ripped around my feet, causing me to fall back. Showering deared, I cough and tremble uncontrollably, unable to stand up. Not so reckless now, are you? Never should stood up 20 paces away, his tame piddler appearance replaced by a sinister countenance. No. But how did you? Casually resting on his shoulder was a maze, decorated with spikes that resembled hearty tissues, namely bones on an oversight indeed. Clamoring for a tree, I uh, unsteadily got up. You'll be surprised how much power dragons and bones can grant you. Everything is permitted with magic, even long after they die. Why are you doing this? Who are you delivering these remains to? He's northern in both his eyes. Please, I'm not going to explain everything just because you asked. Just return the box and you'll be left alone. Now, where do you put it? I unsheathed my sword and wetted my stance. Oh, I had to flutter now. 
I'm not handing it over. Pity. I hate such. Left in the maze, he's slamming the ground. Jeez. Another chasm opened up and I screamed, my body paralyzed by every vibration. It was then that I heard a loud crack. I glanced up in terror. The trees? One of the trees had become stable, and it groaned as it started to lean heavily. The dervish pointed the maze at me threateningly. Move, and the next attack will crush you. Jeez. I... Um, uh, Steady stood up, but stayed in place. My legs felt so weak I probably couldn't walk if I tried. The sound of footsteps was here. Was heard. And I prayed it was my friends. Was that? There was my friends. Four of the original seven knights joined their bishi. They glanced at each other hesitantly. Obviously baffled about the situation, but obediently aligned themselves before the merchant. She's the one who arrived off with the goods. I don't know who she's working for, but since she's refusing to cooperate, give back and we will hold this action against you. What? No. Wait, I'm not betraying anyone. The bots had dragon remains. It's sacrilegious to move them. Their souls can return to a big quiet. We know what we are delivering. That's just a silly superstition. Superstition? What are you doing is this courtesious to dragon kind? Are you a knight in training? Why are you disobeying orders? Do you want to throw away your chance to become a full knight? One of the other knights sighed. Try to speak to me more gently. Don't you think you're being too impulsive here? You're obviously young, with a lot of pressure to your name. Don't do something rash and tarnish Sergeant Swallery's reputation with his disloyalty. It's our duty as knights to carry out our mission with the guild and client's best interests in mind. No, what I'm doing is more important. This is for both, Dragon Kind and Heaven Let's Kind's sake. I'm not surrendering these remains. Sensing that my resolve will not yield, the knights brandish their weapons at me. Then I'll just report to the guild that you got kind of an unfortunate act. Smirking, Devers just slammed his weapon into the ground two more times. Its shock washed over me, rendering me motionless. There was an air splitting crack and the tree began to talk. Oh. Suddenly shift into a girl. And large Turku's body sailed over me. But he's a whatever he is. A section of Lumari's lung next slammed into the thick tongues of the He still trashes he wore. Staining against the weight. Ilmari was a water dragon. He couldn't move online effectively, and he had essentially beat himself <laughs> to protect me. His large face turned to me. His expression was readable in dragon form, but I could sense his concern. I'm fine, and you were right about what the box contained. The knight seemed to waver, heavily by the dragon's presence. Slay the dragon! Consider the side of self defense, and you will be paid. Ten full for its corpse. Don't be scared. Look how helpless he is. Mario snarled, but his only real weapon was his teeth and tail. He was immobile. He couldn't just fall back either, else he risked being flattened by the tree. What was here? I altered my stance in bit impotent the knights to take me on. With numbers on their side, they had advanced over me until one of more impatient ones was I dashed forward, swinging my sword as it met the first knight. She parried and thrust her sword forward. I sat step but had to dog as an egg sore over me. <laughs> Jeez, way too much. Wait, knights are supposed to fight one on one. I spun around and kicked the eggs man in the back of the knee. I knew I was dealing with warriors more experienced than me. Maybe I'd call my own an individual fight, but my bitter victory was short lived when I felt a hot pain sear my left arm. <laughs> I hissed in vain, realizing that I have received a shallow cut from a blade, blood taken down my elbow. Yeah! The moment of hesitation let me open, and I barely block another attack. The X-Men and Swordswoman were overwhelming, and I, I frankly tried to keep them at bay. With each swing, their weapons grew dangerously closer, and each blow river reverberated off my forearm. <sighs> there was a sudden crimson spray as a steel blade bit into my torso as I cried out. <laughs> I was to fanning, then 
and suddenly the X-Men was hit with a full blast of water, causing him to topple over. Our Lee is staying near me! His good old voice startled me, since I had no idea he could talk in his dragon form. Looking back, I saw Marion was urgently stretching out his neck out to attempt to shield me. His spanks fully bared. I retreated closer to him as my three opponents surround me. One sprinting toward to Omari, who was focused on another knight, aiming his sword at the dragon's neck. I blocked this attack, <sighs> trying to, trying not to buckle under the strain, forcing my whole weight forward. I managed to push him back. Jeez, where were you, man? I heard Swift. I, I heard Swift footsteps a second later. And the night I was fighting suddenly flew back from a hasty punch. Here! He flashed at me a confident grin. Sorry, I was preoccupied about with a few others. There will be no reinforcement after this. Two down, three to go, including Dervish. Here glanced back and spotted Ilmari, his face with flicker and pain. I gestured to the manager since his mace. You're stopping now, the weapon causes earthquakes. Kier charged ahead but was blocked by a swordswoman. The other knight who possessed a flail focused on me. Although the flail's range was short, its battering power was enough to make me wary. <laughs> As I dodged the attack, I stepped back, and my foot found nothing but air. Nearly tumbling, I dived to the side to avoid falling into a chasm, leaving me vulnerable. Vulnerable. Jeez! Before I could run away, the deer beside me burst at the steel ball slammed down inches away from my head. Oh. Discarding my sword, I ground the chain before the knight could rise his weapon and reaching onto his grip. He thumbed toward me as I rotated. <clears throat> With a well made kick to his stomach, he staggered back. I quickly retrieved my sword from his crumble. Desperate, he bolted for his weapon, but a strong stream of water from Ilmarie caused him to topple into the chasm. Gear was already incapacitating his opponent, leaving only Dervishy, who had returned an knock to be out of his smallest attack range. We caught up to him. If you cast aside your weapon, no one will, will get hurt. Would you simply follow me orders if it turned you into a me? Turn in? You were the one who stole the merchant's goods. There's no penalty for possessing dragon remains. The other knights will report what happened and you'll whisper about the rank. And... He recklessly slammed his mace to the ground, and sympathetic to the unconscious of wounded knights wrong. Terrified, I dropped my sword as I kneeled down, resisting the urge to My reward as the tremors caused the tree to operate painfully against his scales. Gear wasn't facing the bounded forward. Before there was she could launch another salt, Gear's fist met his chick. The merchant went flying, and his body slammed and tumbled against the heart of It served so much. On his knees, on his knees, Dervishy threw a fit and repeatedly pounded the ground with the mace. Every strike resounded and increased each Whoa. tremor's intensity. So stop it! If you keep that up, Kier had to leap away before the ground nearly swallowed him up. What? Deep fissures appeared and split, causing the ground to distort. Loose deer drained down from the steeper slopes. The dwarfs of the entire region was going to leave. Like a spider web, the ground around the devil she suddenly groaned and hail. I couldn't move. I could only watch helplessly. Wait! The merchant got and slip up, and Kier cupped him just before he vanished into the cup. <sighs> the maze leaping for his grip, disappearing into darkness and giving one final tremor. <sighs> Kier forcibly threw Deverish onto solid ground. I slowly regained my balance, but I was determined to remain strong. There she crumbled to the dirt in a supine position, and I instantly pointed my blade at his false neck. Neck. Why did I say neck? It's over. You're nothing without that weapon, so just get lost. His forehead was beaded with seed as he nodded fervently, all of his flight. Gone. 
You're just going to let him down? What did I just say? You're just going to let him go? He used dragon remains for weapon. Disgusting. I'm not gonna kill him. And Arjun Balera is aware of what's going on. They will probably protect him. Then who could I turn to? Derbyshire wriggled out from under my sword and tried to make a hasty withdrawal. Gear simply punched his light out. He deserves more than that. A little extreme there. He only tried to kill us, but he put his own men in danger. I should just ask Mari to eat him. I don't think he <laughs> A distressed rose covered up attention. Speaking of him, forget about a mentioned. We, we, we hurried back to where Mari was. He surveyed the situation and ran under the trunk, positioning himself close to Ilmari's <laughs> neck. You really don't do well on that. <laughs> Ilmari is amused by Kier's comment. With a heavy hoist, Kier pushed up the trunk with exceptional strength. Mist form around. As the tree crashed back to the ground, I scrambled to Ilmari's side. He was kneeling down and moaning. Ilmari, are you okay? That was so reckless. Yeah, I'll be fine. My neck is going to be sore for a week. He was on the verge of tears. Oh. What about you? Those injuries? I couldn't stop them. My sobbing, he clung to me, burying his head into I'm my sorry. Shoulder. I was useless. That was the best I could do. I patted his back reassuringly. You were anything but useless, Ilmari. I wouldn't have survived if you hadn't come to my rescue. <laughs> I feel like I didn't do much myself. If anything, the person who helped us the most was... He came just so late. We both turned to Kiru expectantly, and he flinched for tender uh... expressions. I, uh... He coughed. He gave us a haughty glare, placing his hand <laughs> on his hips. That's right, I did the most work, sheesh. Both of you are pitiful. <laughs> right. Whoa! Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> We're both in race gear, refreshing, refusing to let him escape. Parasite! <laughs> I laughed and stepped back, while Kier had to apply more force to free himself from Irmari. Remember the box, I uh, returned to its hiding spot and pulled it out from under the shop. I was surprised. It managed to make it though unscathed. <laughs> Moments later, the other two surround me and peer over my shoulders as I uh, unfastened oh. the latch. Earth Dragon. <laughs> Using our remains for weapons. Let's bury them, somewhere we're away from this battlefield, in case they decide to look for them. While Kier fetched the maze, Ilmari and I welcomed till we reached the farthest fissure we could find. We were surprised by how much the region was affected by the maze powers, and Kier worked diligently to pry the remains from the weapon. He tossed them into the chasm, picking up the box. He emptied it over one of the fissures. He placed an open palm on the soil and I stepped back, preparing myself for one of his abilities. The ground trembled, slightly as debris and soil has loosened, filling up a section of the rupture. When it was over, I sighed, feeling utterly exhausted. I've had enough of the earthquakes for one day. I'm completely shaken up. I mustered a weak giggle while heal my ground. Having kind humor, it's bad. Kier. <laughs> I understand. Kier wipe off the dirt off his nose. What now? I grabbed my knight in drinking badge and glanced at it. We had this Miss Wave, but it to the ground. What of them were oh. stunned. Are you sure about this? It's something you work for. I'm sure if your journey explained to the field. He stopped when he saw me shake my head. No. The Arjun Balar Guild is on this. I don't want anything to do with them or the knights. Besides, Derby she had a point. 
The other knights will return what happened and I'll have no chance to redeem myself after that betrayal. I'm... I'm done. I took a few steps forward and turned to them so I could address them properly. Let's go home. Besides, I think this is something you should inform your masters about as soon as possible. If we can rely on the guild to build your poor rapport between heavenkind and your unkind, we'll meet another angle. We headed back to the main road, careful on the steep slope and the chasms to fight. The carriage was gone, and we saw no other knights. He explained that he had managed to drive them up, which was why it took him a while to come to our rescue. Without my knowing, I started to linger behind the two. My feet dragging slowly, which is that. The other two noticed and turned warm. Are you okay? Uh... Aura? I chuckled, trying to reassure him. I mean, them. But the tears appeared yeah. anyway. I'm fine. If anything, I feel like a huge burden was lifted on my shoulders. But it still hurts. I wanted to be a knight for years, now I'm a sect and it will never happen. I work so hard. My shoulders shudder as I cover my face, feeling pathetic and worthless. I sense someone standing before me and I glance up, hear Gloverit, unpressed. He gave me a light smack on the forehead, <laughs> which it doesn't sound anything like a light. Yeah. What was that for? This body in the <laughs> Didn't I tell you this before? That it's just yeah. a title? Yeah. <laughs> Knights are supposed to help those in need. I think a certain someone had already been a knight for a while, in spirit anyway. And in the end, you did the right thing. So we can't thank Thanks. you enough. As we walked, I expressed concern over being sought out. And the others reassured me that nothing like that would happen. I didn't cover a potentially unsettling activity that would need to be confronted after all. They would seek protection from other dragons to watch over Barry, and my heart sank. They avoided the notion that they would be the ones guarding. Guess they still had a mess to make. <laughs>